Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I want to teach you about equalization. We'll talk about the parameters and what they do, as well as a few of the fundamentals of EQ that you should understand before trying to use it. On a basic level, EQ is a way to emphasize or de-emphasize certain frequencies in your sound. Now there are a variety of different kinds of EQs, but for music production you're generally going to want to stick with a parametric EQ. And as usual for our concise guide tutorials, all the knowledge that I give you in this tutorial can be applied to any parametric EQ. However, for this tutorial, we'll use Blue Cat's Triple EQ. A parametric EQ is divided into bands. Each band has a gain, a frequency, and bandwidth. Now on this particular parametric EQ, we have three different bands to choose from. As you can see, the bottom and the top bands behave somewhat differently than this middle band right here. The reason for this is that the bottom and the top bands are shelving bands. A high shelf takes all of the frequencies above one certain frequency and either boosts or lowers them, as you can see here. This low shelf EQ is the same thing, but it applies to everything below a certain frequency. So all the frequencies below this one right here are getting boosted along this curve here. The third and last band, this one in the middle, behaves differently. As you can see, you can actually drag it around and thus affect different frequencies along the spectrum, unlike the shelf EQs which only affect everything above or below a certain frequency. Not only that, but this band also allows you to define the bandwidth, or how wide a band of frequencies it will actually affect. So as you can see with a narrower bandwidth, I'm only affecting a small range of frequencies, and this is good when you want to perform surgical cuts or boosts at certain places in your sound. This interface is pretty typical for an EQ. The vertical axis is defined in terms of decibels, so anything above this center line is a boost and anything below is a cut. As you can see when I mouse around the interface here, this little window right here updates in real time, telling me at what frequency and what gain I'm at. So if I mouse over our middle band right here, you can see that I'm at 7100 hertz and I'm at a cut of negative 5.1 decibels. So I'll play a drum loop through this EQ while I mess with some of its settings and you can hear the effect that they have. I've loaded up a drum loop from our Tech House Drums Volume 1 pack. First I'll play it for you without any EQ. So first let's see what the low shelving band does. As I bring the gain down, you'll hear the low frequencies start to drop out. Now listen to what happens when I decrease the bandwidth, that is the width of effect between the middle band and the low shelf band. You'll hear that as I decrease the bandwidth, a lot more of the frequencies in this range will be audible because the cut will become narrower and narrower, focusing more and more on just the very low frequencies. The high shelving EQ band has a similar effect, but on the high frequencies. Again, using a narrower bandwidth for the high and low shelving frequency bands, fewer of those high and low frequencies will be affected by the EQ changes here. With a wider bandwidth, such as this one, more and more of the frequencies will be boosted up here and cut down here. I'll reset these EQ bands and we'll take a look at the middle band now. I'll start out with a little bit of gain so that you can hear the effect of the EQ change and then I'll sweep through some of these frequencies as the drum loop plays back and you can hear how they get emphasized and de-emphasized as I do the sweep. Again, the bandwidth setting is vitally important here because it allows you to determine how many frequencies are affected. So the bandwidth settings are really useful for when you want to focus in on one specific frequency or drum sound, or if you want to use a much wider bandwidth in order to boost a larger number of frequencies or a collection of drum sounds that all share a similar frequency range. 
For example, say I want to find the clap sound in this loop, and then de-emphasize it a little bit by bringing that frequency range down in the mix. The best way to do this is actually to start out with a very high gain. Then, as you're playing your drum loop back, sweep through all your frequencies until the sound you're trying to isolate becomes very obvious in the mix. And that's where you'll actually want to perform a cut. Let's test this technique out by trying to find the lower frequencies of the clap sound and reducing them a bit in the mix. Seems like I've isolated the lower part of the clap sound, so now all I have to do is perform a bit of a cut right at this frequency of 559 Hz. The last step I'll take is to play around with the bandwidth setting until I focus in on just that clap sound, trying to leave everything else that sits around it in the mix relatively unaffected. Now that I've defined a narrow enough bandwidth and performed a little bit of a gain cut on where I think I should be in order to reduce that lower end part of the clap, let's test out my work by first listening to the drum loop without EQ and then listening to it with EQ. First without EQ. And now with. As you could hear when I turned the EQ on and off, the change I made subtly brought down the lower frequencies of the clap sound while leaving everything else relatively unaffected. I'll reset this middle EQ band and then we'll try this technique out on another sound in the drum loop. Next I'll try to isolate that lower pitched hi-hat sound and perform a cut there. So right here at 3344 Hz, you can really hear that lower tuned hi-hat sound coming through. So again, I'll perform a cut while I play back the drum loop. Now I'll simply adjust the bandwidth and try to focus in as much as I can on just that one sound. Now like I did with that last EQ cut, I want to double check my work. So first I'll listen to it without EQ, and then I'll turn the EQ on. So right now I'll play the beat back, first four quarter notes without the EQ, and then four quarter notes with the EQ. And then I'll just keep alternating those two so you can hear the difference. And again, it was a very subtle change to the sound that brought it down in the mix just a little bit without drastically affecting the timbre of the loop, and thus keeping the general feel of the drums intact. Now one thing I hope you've been noticing while I've been making these cuts is that I'm making relatively subtle changes of only a few decibels to each of these frequencies. Although huge boosts and cuts in certain frequency ranges definitely have their use as a special effect, this can sometimes backfire on the producer, especially further along in the production process, when all of those huge EQ boosts finally start to layer on top of one another and wreak havoc on the mix. And this brings me to my next point. In general, it's best to cut sounds rather than boost them. And the reason for that is simple. Your mix only has a certain amount of headroom in it for each frequency. When you make a boost, you're taking up more of that precious headroom, and thus less of the sounds that you add later on will have room to sit well in the mix and still sound clear. However, when you cut a frequency, you're actually adding headroom back into the mix, so that the listener will be able to separate other sounds from the one you're currently EQing. Now that's not to say that boosts in EQ are always bad. Far from it. Sometimes you want to turn up the high frequencies of a loop a little bit to accentuate the hi-hats, but it's important that you don't make such extreme changes to your EQ that you end up sabotaging your mix down the road. Just as long as you're always thinking about the amount of headroom that you have in your mix for each of the frequencies, and that your EQ changes are as subtle as you can possibly make them, while still achieving the effect you want, you should end up with a pretty good sound. And again, like anything else in music production, practice really helps, and pretty soon this will be second nature to you. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative!